Hi, and welcome to our Aim for Good video series. Uh, we designed Aim for Good with the hope that we could connect individuals in this community and provide different resources to shine light on local nonprofits, people that might be in need, um, any different resources that we could provide out there for you. This uh, video series is intended to provide relevant information um, from industry leaders and also connect and highlight uh, our colleagues, our friends, our clients to nonprofits in need. Please stay tuned at the end of the video as you'll see different links that we discuss during the conversation so that you'll be able to contact them directly and help anyone in need. And also, you know, make sure to subscribe to our channels. We'll be updating these videos on a regular basis. Thanks again for joining us. So hello everybody, welcome again to one of our uh, videos for the Aim for Good series. Uh, we are honored to have Jamie McNeese here today with us. She's a longtime friend and uh, been in our world for a number of years and uh, we just felt that it was really important to get the word out there about different solutions in the uh, health insurance space, especially with all the changes happening at different employers around town. So um, I'm honored to introduce her at this point and she'll give us a quick bio of what's going on in her world and uh, we'll go from there. How you doing, Jamie? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Mark and Adam. I'm Jamie McNeese. I'm the health insurance lady with Thrive Health Insurance Services. Um, I do health insurance for individuals and families, specifically related to Cover California. Uh, I do small group health insurance for employers, and I also do Medicare for people that are aging into Medicare or need some help with their current Medicare coverage. Um, I like to say I do one thing, and that's health insurance. And so I do it really well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I think that's that's awesome. And I think um, what we're hearing a lot with uh, employees who are dealing with furloughs or getting potentially laid off, um, one of the areas to start maybe could be to explain COBRA, how to cover California, what people should be uh, thinking about and doing right now. Maybe you can go into that. Sure. So when someone gets laid off, um, regardless of the size of their employer, they will be offered COBRA. Um, COBRA is simply truly the name of a great big fancy legal bill, um, which means that as an employee, the coverage that you currently have is allowed to continue um, and that you are not left without health insurance. So for a person who is currently undergoing a lot of treatment, if they're offered COBRA, a lot of times it's good for them to stay on COBRA to continue to have access to the doctors that they've had, especially if they've had a, a really high level of treatment or a lot of expenses. Um, because on every health insurance policy, there is um, a maximum out of pocket that we pay. So if they've already contributed a lot of money towards that maximum out of pocket, even though we might be able to find a cheaper plan, they're gonna start at square zero and they're gonna to have to start contributing to that maximum amount of pocket again. So sometimes it's, um, when it comes to COBRA, it's let's be sure you still have access to your same doctors and let's do the math and see where that takes you financially. Mm. Um, so going back to uh, regardless of the size of the employer, um, on a, if someone is coming from a small employer, that means that it, generally speaking, the cost of insurance um, for that group is I don't want to say it's going to be expensive, but it's going to be a lot more expensive from that person who just got laid off from Pachanka or Paula, because both of those organizations are very high in their number of employees. So health insurance is an entire industry based on the law of large numbers. The more people that participate, um, then the less expensive the policy is. So without being a total health insurance geek, um, I can tell you that some people that have been furloughed or laid off from Pechanga, um, even if they were to try to get a policy through Covered California, now that they're getting really high levels of unemployment, um, it's been more cost effective for them to take COBRA at full price because they come from a very large employer than it is for them to choose Covered California with a tax credit to lower the cost. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a whole different animal. Now, as far as the covered California scenario, say that there's a person that's been laid off or just an individual at this point is looking for a solution. I know typically they have a deadline that's earlier in the year, but they've reopened that, right? 
They did. Um, so they first they extended the open enrollment period um, to accommodate people who didn't realize that there were additional tax credits from the state of California. So they extended it and then they extended it again due to COVID. So right now, the deadline to enroll through Cover California and directly with some of the health insurance companies, if you're just an individual or family outside of an employer group plan, um, it, the deadline is now June 30th. So I can continue to enroll people as late as that without there being any issue related to um, any pre-existing conditions or any qualifying event. It's wide open. I, I can enroll you today. That's great. And I, I meant to ask a question about COBRA too. I mean, what's the duration of that typically? I mean, how long can they stay on COBRA before they have to make a decision to do something else? Oh, that's a really good question. So um, if someone got laid off today, then their insurance with their employer would last until the end of the month, which is going to be May 31st. After that, they have 60 days in order to accept COBRA. So during that 60 days, I, I like to explain to people that they are both insured and not insured at the same time. During that 60 days, if, if they have not sent in their, you know, I accept COBRA and here's my first premium payment, if something happened during that 60 days, let's say they got hospitalized on day 45, they could go back and accept COBRA retroactively to the first date that they lost coverage and that thing that ended up in the hospital is going to be covered through COBRA retroactively. Hmm. So after that 60 days though, you're locked out of COBRA and you don't have the option to go back and accept. Okay, perfect. It's a complicated world. I, mean, I saw Adam's eyes, you know, as far as yeah. <laughs> that all goes. Yeah. Well, so, and, and with that said, I'll strategize with people too. and. Um, in some cases, you know, we'll just, we'll do the math. Um, let's see, you know, what's available in Cover California and how much of a tax credit you might get. But let's see what would happen if we would wait a month and enroll for the following month, um, extend it out a little bit. And, you know, and it's, and it's a roll of the dice. It's a win-win for some of those people um, where even if something happened, it, you know, in that first 30 days, COBRA is still going to cover it. All they have to do is fill out the form and send in their check. If not, then if nothing happened and they stayed healthy, we just saved them 30 days worth of health insurance costs. Yeah. I think one of the things that we are, are hoping to accomplish with this video series is to be able to point people in the right direction because I know um, I'm, I'm as I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm thinking about, okay, so employees are dealing with their human resources department. They're getting a lot of information from a lot of different sources and they don't really know where to turn to figure it all out. I know that's been a, a big thing with all the CARES Act and the PPP with our um, business owners, right? So in, or, in order to just better understand Thrive and you and, and what you do, are you saying that someone that's dealing with this, they're talking to HR, they're talking to their employer, they can also talk to you to get just an independent voice in this? Is that yes, and in, in my case, I love that stuff. So um, seriously, I'm a health insurance geek. I, I'm fascinated. And um, so I kind of have like three or four people where we're waiting for them to get the COBRA offer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to review the COBRA offer with them so that we can compare what their costs are going to be, what their coverage is like with their employer um, and determine if it makes more sense for them to stay, stay or go, frankly. Um, but, um, no disrespect to health insurance professionals, but they're really good at health or uh, not health insurance, prof HR professionals. Yeah. They're really good at HR. They don't understand health insurance. I, I just got off the phone with a gal this morning who was hired. She was under the impression that she was a temp and so that she and she was going to have to wait six months before she was eligible, eligible for insurance. Well, comes come to find out the project that she was hired for is temporary. She is considered a full-time employee that was supposed to enroll in insurance after her first 30 days. And when I asked her about that and did she receive anything from HR with a health insurance offer, she said, I never saw anything. I never saw plans, I never saw options. So I gave her the language to go back to her employer um, <laughs> to play dumb 
and and to say gee whiz I, I don't remember waiving my health insurance can you check to see if I ever waived that and then to start digging deeper because I believe that that employee is entitled to the insurance that her employer should have offered her five months ago um, so I love helping in that kind of scenario um, even for people that currently have insurance if your income has drastically changed due to being laid off um, through this whole COVID thing um, if you're in Cover California don't go into Cover California and try to make the change on your own um, I have six people currently that are my um, <laughs> adopted problems who they gave they entered information into Cover California they entered it incorrectly and it put them into Medi-Cal and it automatically dropped them from their insurance so now I'm working to communicate with Medi-Cal in the language they understand how to correct that information in order to put them back into insurance and make them eligible for the plan that they originally chose. Yeah, I would say to everybody out there that's listening to this, I've referred multiple people to Jamie, especially in the Covered California space, and um, she knows what she's doing for sure. It's a it's a complex animal, and I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, as she said, it, it takes a lot of focus in that space to make sure you're doing the right thing. So, uh, let tell us what's the best way for somebody watching this that might be in need to get a hold of you. The website, contact information, and we'll put it all up on our video at the end of this. Yeah, just a, a phone call if I don't answer right away, which um, I typically am able to, then um, leave a message um, and call directly to my cell phone. It's 951-265-2784. Don't use my 800 number. That just kind of goes into a, I don't know where it goes, but it doesn't <laughs> come directly to me. Um, and and I, I really do love helping people, especially in our region. Um, you know that uh, Mark's aware, I'm a cancer survivor and four years cancer free. Congratulations. Um, awesome. And for me, that was probably the greatest learning experience related to health insurance that I could have gone through because I discovered personally what services are available to us um, in terms of medical specialists and hospitals and um, where we should be going for catastrophic services. Um, so I, um, you know, if I have the opportunity, um, I love Michelle's Place Cancer Resource Center, and I get a lot of calls from people who have reached out to Michelle's Place for help. I love having the conversation with someone who's just been diagnosed and reviewing the insurance they have and helping them to understand what they have, how it's going to work for them, and what doctors and facilities they have access to. So that's that's fun stuff for me i i love being in that space with them well jamie i love your spirit you look great you know you've always been a, a wonderful person to have as a friend locally and i appreciate your time here i think i know the answer to this question already adam and i have been uh, trying to highlight different local charities that people favor so we can highlight it in this video but i'll ask you anyway uh, do you have a local charity that you prefer michelle's place cancer <laughs> resource center serving all cancers it's a That's wonderful great. place. Great people over there. So, well, we thank you so much for your time today, Jamie. I know you're busy and uh, we look forward to working together with you in the future. Everybody that's watching this, make sure you hang on to the end. We'll have all Jamie's contact information. We'll also have Michelle's place information as well. And uh, we appreciate you being part of this series. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Bye-bye. Thanks, you guys. All right. Take care.